How's it going you lot? Good morning. Hope you're all well. Now, we're going to be focusing on trying to get a streamer running today. Um, not get you running, but try and help some of you lot out that might be having the same issue. Now, I had a comment um, on the last video I'd done of this SGS 52cc streamer. I think it was the last one. I had a comment anyway. Where somebody, um, they can't get their one to start. It's brand new. They can't get it to start. They sent it back... Um, and apparently it works fine, and then this person's got it back and it still won't start. So I'm going to show you what the comment is, and then uh, we'll have a look over on my one, and I'll try and show you some of the things that could be causing this particular issue. Um, now, this particular issue might not be isolated to this particular brand, SGS, but as soon as it's an SGS streamer that this person's having trouble with, I thought... We'll focus on this because, as you lot know, I'm trying my very hardest to stand up to this brand because I do believe in them, but the streamer is causing trouble. But Oh, and another thing. Some of you may remember I was having huge trouble with um, the streamer, with the, the spore or the head or whatever you would like to call it. Um, it's absolute rubbish, this original one. Um, I had a brand new one, um, and it's exactly the same design, and it was the same. Um, I've still got the original wire in it, but the minute I put this on the streamer and revved it up This is this one came wound Exactly out the factory right exactly how it sent it to me. I put it on the streamer Didn't even cut any grass. I just revved it up and the string was flying out So I had to rewind it back in again, but it's no good It's, it's not supposed to keep flying out unless you press that button and that's how it came out the factory so when they said oh they put a post up on Twitter and they said um, about their new streamer, their new design streamer or whatever. And I commented on their Twitter post and I said, have you still got the same het spool? And they said, no, we've got a new design. We'd like to send you one out. I said, brilliant. And here it is. So it's a different design at least. Um, different <clears throat> different uh, looking. But whether it's going to work the same, I don't, it looks like it's still the same where you have to put it in and wind it up. I think that's a silly thing, but if it works, then fair enough. So I'm going to give this one a test in another video, alright? A different video, this will be tested. In this video, we're going to work on pro possible problems. Let's have a look at the comment. Right, so here we go. It's by that person there. I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, sorry. But, hi, I have the exact same strimmer, but can't get the pull cord to pull out fully. Sent it back and they said it was working fine. I have the fuel lines free of air and the fuel bulb full. It gives a cough when have the pull cord is pulled. What? It gives a cough when have the pull cord is pulled, but nothing else. I don't know what that is. Um, can someone help please? So basically this person here, however you pronounce that, um, is having trouble getting the pull start to come all the way out. It sounds as if, you know, it's sort of only coming out, I mean it should only, it shouldn't come out that far. That's as far as it should come out anyway, that's the end of the line. Um, but you should only have to pull it about that much to get it to start. So... We'll look into it in a minute. I'll put you on a tripod. But you no, know, if it's flooded, then it might get. It could get not seized up, but it could get hydro locked in a way. So you'd have to take the spark plug out. So we'll go over a few things. But if you're having this trouble, where the pull start seems is it's getting stuck. You're pulling it and it's jamming up. If you take the plug out, you get rid of all the compression, and you should just be able to pull it really easily. And you're about to see where the trouble is. Because if you can pull it all the way out with no plug in it, then there could be an issue somewhere with that. It'd probably flooding or something. If you keep pressing the primer bulb, I mean it's not usual when one of these engines, a petrol engine, is flooded, it shouldn't get stuck. Not like a nitro engine where it would get stuck and you'd have to take the glow plug out. Anyway, let's put you on a tripod, I'll take the plug out and I'll show you what it should look like um, with no plug in it and how you, you know, what it should sound and feel like. So when you get your streamer from SGS, um, providing you bought it new, but hopefully you should get it for second hand, you should get a little kit like this, a little bag, 
um, and it gives you everything you need to run it because obviously they're aiming they're they're not aiming this at professionals although it's meant to be a professional strimmer they're not aiming it at professionals they're aiming it at ordinary people so they give you this little this little tool set because they assume that the ordinary person isn't going to have a spanner which is good you know they give you a tool set what more can you ask for so you get this one now this is to take your plug out so you take you take your cap off by the way, I'm I'm aiming this video at the person who knows nothing. If you know how to take a spark plug out, fair enough. Sometimes when I when I explain things very easily, people go, "Well, I already know how to do that." So I'm aiming this video at someone who don't know, maybe have their petrol shimmer for the first time. So you undo it and screw it out, right? Now we're not going to be looking at this. It's a bit. This one's a bit dirty because I let it tick over for a bit. I like to let things tick over. That's what I am. So once you've taken that out, you should, now there'll be no compression in the engine, so you should just be able to pull that very easily. Right? If you can pull it all the way out, and there's not getting stuck, it's not snagging, and nothing's happening with no plug in it, the issue is with the plug in now. Now, assuming that you've got the right plug in it that come with it at the factory, it won't be too long. Because if you have, if you stick a spark plug in it that's too long, because you can get longer ones, see? If you stick one in it that's too long, it'll hit the piston, and you won't be able to turn the engine over. Or you might get one that's just a bit too long, and it'll hit every now and again. But we're going to roll that out, because this person here, on this particular comment, has just bought it brand new, as far as I understand. So... It should have the right spark plug in it. I'm guessing, and I'm banking on the fact that it's flooded. So, if this is the case, you want to take the plug out, and you want to give it a few hard pulls like that. And what that'll do, any excess fuel, petrol, on top of the cylinder, on top of the piston, sorry, um, will force it out the spark plug hole and unflood it. But it's unlikely that a petrol engine like this will be flooded and get stuck when usually when they flood they just won't start um, and it'll come out the exhaust and your spark plug will get too wet and won't spark and you'll just have to take the spark plug out and give it a bit of a clean um, but because this person is complaining that it's getting stuck we'll take that measure anyway so you put that in do it up don't want to do it up too tight just use common sense and do it up to a reasonable tightness there's probably a torque setting but we're not going to go into that and stick that on there. I've just pushed it too far. But you um, see it already. This is going a bit brittle. That's a, that's a bit strange. I shouldn't really be doing that. This strimmer is probably only about a year old or so. Um, and you probably used it about four or five times. Because the bloody thing don't, don't work. Anyway, that's enough of that. So you put that on there. Now once you've done that and you've unflooded it. We'll have a look see what to do next. Now this person was saying um, that they got the, the fuel line with no air in it. The fuel line is here, no air in it. That's a breather, that one. And the primer bulb is full up. So underneath here, that's the primer bulb and the fuel line. So when you push that, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Hopefully, hopefully if you look there very closely. I might better zoom in a little bit. Now when you push this, um, you should see fuel going up. Well, sorry, that's the return. <laughs> that's the feed. Well, my mistake. Um, but you should see that get full up in your primer bowl. So you want to get no air in them. You're going to have a little bubble of air in the primer bulb. That's normal. You only want to push it until that happens, probably three times or so. And then around here, you've got your choke, which is on run. You want to put that up to start. Flick your switch on the handle to the one position. And just give it a few pulls. Now it's normal for these type of engine, this type of two-stroke engine with this carburetor and everything. When you've got it on the choke, it might cough. It'll cough and splutter, but it won't run on the choke, okay? 
this is where I suspect that this particular person may be having trouble because they might be expecting it to run on the choke. It won't run on the choke. If this plays, if this works out, it's supposed to, because it's a bit temperamental at the minute. Because I'm, I'm, to tell you the truth, this one I'm ragging it a lot because I'm testing it. But it won't run on the choke, all right. So you want to pull it until it coughs on the choke, all right. A little bit of a cough. It took a little while because this has been sitting up. It's been sitting up upside down. And even though I did prime it, so it took a little while, but it coughed. And once it coughs, put it down to the run position, and with any luck, it should start up. Now I know it conked out because it's cold. Now, personally, for a brand new engine. I can't think of much else that could cause, you know, unless it's failed, but apparently this, this person sent it back to SGS and they said it runs fine. So it's obviously something that this person, if you're watching this, whoever that person who commented was, I think what you're doing wrong is you're probably trying to get it to run on the choke. It won't. It will cough on the choke, fire like once or twice, and then it will conk out. Put it down to the run right and then start it up and give it a few revs not flat out ones just little ones until it's running because it's brand new it's all got a break in it's not going to be loose you know it's all everything's going to be tight with a new engine i don't know what the experience is that some people have some people buy themselves a petrol strimmer and expect it just to work well it's not the case with most engine things i mean Manufacturers these days do their best to make things as idiot proof as possible, but with an engine you're never going to be able to do that You still got to use some kind of common sense so I Think I've gone over most things that I can think of that could be causing this particular problem So it says take the plug out give it a few pulls get rid of any excess fuel that might be on top of the piston put a plug Oh, you could give it a clean, but probably don't need to put a plug back in and away you go I'm just going to quickly show you how to clean the spark plug actually just in case you do need to do that right now a lot of people are very very wasteful and what they do is they just change the spark plug and they just put a new one in which is completely unnecessary you can clean the spark plugs you can buy cleaners or you can do it yourself all you need is a piece of rag and a wire brush there's many different methods you can burn them you can put fire on them a lighter or something um, you know, I've, all different people use a few different methods, but I usually just use a wire brush and a piece of cloth. So you take your plug out, because if it is flooded, it might be a bit wet and you might need to clean it anyway. So you have a look at it, yep, yeah, looks dirty, whatever. So you get your cloth, dry it off. All right, just dry it off. Get all the petrol off of it. And then you get your wire brush and you hold it like that and you just give it a bit of a brushing my wire brush ain't the best it's a little bit spewed out it's cleaned many hundreds of spark plugs so just get that trying to get well my one's got, got soot on it but and carbon and oil um but your one won't have if this is a, if you're having this trouble with a new one of a new like this person who commented was brand new it won't have, it'll still be clean because it ain't run yet so but it's always best just to get all the petrol off because if it if the spark plug right if all that is full of petrol and it's all wet in there don't forget the spark jumps between you see the gap between the top and the electrode there that's where the spark jumps between and if that's all wet in there with fuel, it ain't going to work. So just dry it off. There you go. That's lovely and clean now. Beautiful. Stick it back in. And that's how you clean a spark plug. Most people who take the old one out, which is perfectly fine, it's just a bit dirty. They stick a new one in 
is incredibly wasteful. Americans tend to do that a lot. Americans and Canadians, they tend to just do that. Because over there, they just waste things willy-nilly. But hopefully, that's helped. Some of you get your streamer, whether it's an old one you're just having trouble with. Or if you've bought a brand new one, it could be any make. And that's how you do it. Because it's not just SGS. Basically, this design of engine is not... Um, only from SGS um, you know this is a typical design of engine for a strimmer so they all have a typical choke basically if this wasn't branded with that on it and wasn't blue you could it could be any make so just make sure that you put it on the choke give it a few pulls you might even have to hold the throttle I mean there is a little button on the throttle um, so you pull the trigger and you push the button in and it holds it if you don't want to hold if you don't want to hold it yourself and then you can pull it a few times till it coughs and splatters on the choke put it down to run and then give it a few more pulls when an engine is cold you must understand that it's not going to just get up and go when any engine is cold it will take a little bit of work to get it to run i could go into massive details on it but it'll make you'll be a lot of talking and you might get bored if you want me to explain if you want me to explain exactly what happens in in an engine when it's cold why they why they're a bit temperamental when they're cold and things like that and why you might have a lawnmower or a strimmer that's a bit it, for about a minute it just doesn't run right and then after a couple of minutes it runs fine which is normal if you would like to know why that is just leave a comment in the vid in the bottom in the comments for this video and i'll make a video explaining every single detail about why engines perform and behave in the way they perform uh, behave um, but i won't put it in this one because i was just trying to get just trying to explain that specific issue with the engine on that sgs strimmer because i don't because a lot of people comment on my videos about the sgs strimmer and they're annoyed and they say that it's no good, it's rubbish, uh, it won't start, or whatever, it won't run properly. But it's not that, alright? They're a bit of a strange design for some reason on some of their things, but the S the engine on these trimmers are good engines. It's just the other things that are a bit funny. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope I helped you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll do my very best to answer them because a strimmer is a strimmer. Very simple. Um... And I'm not linked to SGS in any way, but a strimmer is a simple strimmer. So I'll see you on the next one, dudes. Take care, wouldn't you?